right, so the season's done, folks. And this is obviously the beginning of the video, and you're going to see some footage of what all transpired from this nasty mess that I have now. And we're completely fruitless, and we're sitting around October 25th right now, and I'm getting ready to do the final cleanup of this patch and put down a cover crop. But until then, what I need to do is clean it up. Stella, let's look at this mess. What kind of mess do I have? Yeah. yeah. Two, you might as well put that back up. The deer ate all, pretty much all of the vines. Don't have to leave. I know, the deer did get in here and eat. And I had a little squash sitting there. It's gone now. It's okay. in a deer's belly. It's got a ton of cleanup. A big mess. Big yeah. mess. But we'll get to it. Yeah. And we'll go start on that now. But until then, you guys check out what led up to this mess. Yeah. October 9th, Ritterball Patch Compound Main Patch. Lunchtime for old Doc. Run home real quick to try to get this plant ready for the pull this evening. And the fruit for the lift. Pops is gonna be here. He's on his way. Should be here in about 15 or 20 minutes. And he'll probably do the lion's share of <laughs> patchwork of cleanup while I'm still at the office taking care of my, my patients. And then I'll be home and we'll get her on a trailer. Head down south, get this girl some some scale time. <laughs> well, it looks like it might rain on me. Yay, look at that nonsense. Or actually, it's gonna rain on Dad. I'll be comfortably inside an office. <laughs> but I pulled off everything covering the stump, and I wanted to evaluate overall stump size. Not a huge, huge stump. Matter of fact, it's pretty small. Wrist size, you know, good, healthy. Boy, it feels nice. Secondary allotment, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11, that's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, the pumpkin I tried to set and didn't like, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Of course the main vine on this one was cut this is one of those fruit that either you're gonna to have to perform or you're coming out of my patch she performed just like magic could come home from the dental office and pops has got it all cleaned up ready to lift <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you dad i do appreciate that he did leave the main vine for me to inspect or i guess us to inspect but we kind of already looked at it before <laughs> fruit We'll give the fruit a good walk around before we put her up in the sky. I feel like she's got a lot of shoulders. Random whatever's on that fruit. Get that off of there. Continue that walk around, Doc. I can't remove the fan. Pumpkin grew over the fan. Rookie mistake. Gotta get my act together. Nothing but shoulders, Pete. Yeah. I like it. Let's put it in the sky, Pops. What do you think? What's that? Let's put it in the sky. What do you think? I think we'd be very, very careful. Yes, sir. We got the power line. Yeah, cable. That's cable line. Kids won't be able to watch their whenever they watch. We're getting ready to hook our ring. Let's see what we have. Got clear skies, yeah, clear skies. Oh boy, my shoes. I haven't, I haven't walked on this soil this much the whole season. <laughs> Before I lift this, Scott, how much do you weigh, buddy? So we're all loaded up, ready to rock and roll. Dad is on the front of the trailer. My fruit's on the back of the trailer. And the next morning, we head to Raleigh, North Carolina to weigh in the North Carolina State Fair. Getting fruit unloaded. <laughs> Funny surprise photo of Pops here. But you look at these fruit from different angles, and, you know, maybe Dad's looks bigger from this angle, or maybe mine looks bigger from a different angle. But realistically, they're it's pretty much the same size, guys. Mine's 435 inches and dad's 433 inches on OTT, so two inch discrepancy on actual size of the fruit. 
We get the law to come and unload us, which is super nice. This thing can boom extend out there. We're not having to drag fruit off with straps and that sort of thing like you do at a lot of way off. So they always run a really good, clean, tight ship at the North Carolina State Fair. It's one of my favorite way offs to go to. It's inside too, so I've been there during a hurricane and, and stay good and dry. Well, Pops hits the scale with his fruit and he gets the personal best. 1,736 and a half pounds which is a new versatile best, like I said, biggest fruit he's ever grown. It ends up being about seven and a half pounds over estimation, which isn't bad. We're gonna call that a chart fruit. One of the most beautiful fruit I've ever seen grown and definitely the prettiest fruit that's ever came out of Pop's Patch between you and me. So I'm next up because I have two inches more in OTT. I'm you know second to last to be weighed. My fruit tapes out 435 with an estimated at 1748. Durn fruit hits the scale guys at 2,025.7 pounds, 16% heavy versus chart. I'm floored. And you look at the videos from earlier and you see me lifting this fruit. And yeah, there's a crane scale hooked to my lifting apparatus. And I took it up to about 1,900 pounds, turned it off. So I knew I had a 1,900 pound fruit. I did not know that I had a over 2,000 pound one ton fruit. So my top came off. <laughs> I was jumping around like yahoo. First over the ton fruit for me, new personal best, and an astounding 16% heavy to chart on the 1707.5 Casper. So it was a good day for me and a very good fruit for me. I was happy to grow her and I would grow that seed again in a heartbeat. One fruit left. We just gotta get to, get to Hamilton, Ohio with that last girl, Crystal, our scale fruit. Home now from Raleigh, North Carolina after putting our first ton fruit on the scale. Yeah. So we're home that Tuesday night and this is Wednesday. Boy, she's foggy out there. And I took down the overall structure. Still have some blankets and sheets on the fruit. Just stepping back to enjoy the grow a little bit because she's gonna come off the vine Friday and head to Canfield. Crestle, my scale fruit, save the biggest and best for last, chasing those pounds. So I actually took all the sheets off uh, on that Thursday and enjoyed her. My goodness, what a nice fruit. And spent the day just kind of looking the plant over and remembering to grow and, and just enjoying it. You know, all this summer long, you grow it and you enjoy the weight gains, you enjoy the process of growing it. But the fruit, I feel like a lot of times gets lost in that. So to just look things over and reminisce and see where you're standing and sit back, kick back in a chair and just enjoy it. Man, that's nice. That's nice. Because the next day it's going to be busy. Pops and the ether coming over on that Friday and we're going to get that fruit lifted and we're going to put her on the trailer. Here's Friday, guys. We're going, that's the day. We're getting her lifted, cut off on the trailer, ready to rock and roll to Canfield. good she's not dripping too bad which is good that means she hadn't started pushing back she hadn't started pushing back yet so the fruit is free and clear all foliage vines and nonsense has been removed from the patch tripod set up we're ready to lift walking around just enjoying the fruit try to keep her a little bit shaded from sun still because it's kind of a hot day on this friday we get a lifted Nice and clean and smooth and safely, thanks to my buddy Ethan and Pops, put on a trailer behind Joe's Jeep Grand Cherokee. Got that hemi to pull this girl to Ohio. <laughs> we head out that day. We head out that day. Get in late. Enjoy a nice cheeseburger. Get to bed. Next day. We show up on site. Of course, it's still raining. It is a cold, miserable mess. But all the growers are welcoming. And it's a sight to see all these pumpkins. Of course, me and Dad and Ethan, we're pumpkin drunk. We're walking around, really just enjoying people's fruit. 
different sizes, shapes, and collars, and all your top heavy hitters. They tend to bring good fruit to this. They want to compete against one another, and it was nice to saddle up for the competition. My fruit sitting here, Crestal, my scale fruit, my goodness, she looks small in that five by five pallet. And, and she is, she's 434 inches official tape. And that's what I had her on as the scale and estimates out at 1,739 pounds. You know, that puts her on 16th place uh, fruit to be weighed in line. So she, she's, she's not up in the top 10, but we know she's heavy from the scale. And, and a lot of other folks do too. It hasn't really been much of a secret that she was north of 2,000 pounds. Got to see Rick Kaismore with his fruit get unloaded and super proud of Rick. My goodness. Doug really helped him raise his growing level this year and put him up on the top notch. And that's a gorgeous fruit too. Jim Hazelton with his, that's an 839 Sandercock is the seed that he grew it off. That's something that you're probably going to see a lot of soil next year out of the 839 center cock. It's a good seed, produces a beautiful fruit that's heavy to chart, every one of them. And hats off to Jim for good fruit with, that took a stab at his personal best. I was lucky enough to catch a photograph of my buddy Doug and Rick. Doug's passing off his Ohio State record to his pops, Rick. And that state record stood for about a week or so. Pretty good. <laughs> It's better than nothing and still doesn't take away from an amazing fruit. So here me and Pops are. Yeah, we hit the scale, 2144.5. That's pretty much what I anticipated. And that matches what the scale and the lifting crane scale said. That puts that fruit at 23.3% over chart. So she is an absolute boat anchor of a fruit. 120 days old just gorgeous and healthy. I couldn't be happier. Don't know what else to say about it. Um, you just, anytime you get a PB and you're PBing by 100 pounds and you PB twice in a season, it, it's, it's nice. So I was able to snap a few photographs after the fact. I drug uh, my buddy Stelts over and we got a quick photograph with him. <laughs> and, and then I walked around the fruit and I wanted to take uh, some more photographs of the fruit before you know, that was it. You, like I said earlier, you, you don't spend a whole lot of time looking at the fruit. It's always covered. So when you're finally at a way off, you can look at it, compare it to the other fruit, and, and finally really enjoy it. And the stem is something else. This stem this whole season, you know, we started out with a tiny stem. We ended the season with a tiny stem. She's tiny in length, but the overall circumference or diameter of the stem itself is, is pretty good. It's almost as big as a stretched out hand. There just wasn't a whole lot of that stem, and that's okay. As long as it remains healthy, happy, and it feeds that fruit, and it most certainly did, then the stem's doing its job. Final look at the fruit from a good angle. Nice collar, good healthy for 120 days. The last 20 days of life between depth 100 to depth 120, she only gave me four inches. That's it. And if you're looking at the chart, that's not a whole lot of weight. But realistically, on the scale, I knew better. That fruit gave me 160 pounds for those four inches. That's right. Every inch was 40 pounds. And she was still given six to eight pounds a day at the very end. We just ran out of days. Eh, that's the way it goes. Next year, we'll be a little bit more prepared. Final photo of top 10 growers. And, of course, there's more than 10 folks there if you count them out. And that's because there's a couple teams. You know, Dave and Carol are a team, and uh, the Andrus group, there's three of them there. They're a team. But that's a good look at the, the who's who of Canfield. And I was really honored to be standing up there with them and to be part of that way off. Uh, I'd recommend, if you've never weighed in Canfield, make the trip up. Uh, the high folk are very warm and welcoming and and all the PA and New York folk, I mean, they're just good time. And they're going to bring their big girls there. So you'll get to see some good fruit. Well, that's it for the season, folks. A little bit drowned rat myself playing with sprinklers. Of course, the patch is cleaned up from the start of the video. And I have the water going. And I've got a cover crop. We have rye, winter rye, and a little bit of mustard. Don't know if a mustard will hit before... It gets terribly cold, but we're in a warm spell, so I know for a fact we'll definitely get the rye rocking and rolling. I really appreciate you guys following along this season. Hopefully you enjoyed the journey as much as I did, and hopefully you learned something along the way. 
Next year's gonna be a good year. We met a lot of goals this year. Team Doc did work. As for Team Doc, those folks that are on my team, keep an eye out. You'll see a video sometime soon where I'll be drawing some names of my winners and we'll get some addresses and get some seeds shipped out to you folks. I really appreciate you following along this season. Until 2024, grown big, research, all that nonsense that we do in the off season. Thanks for following, guys. Doc out.